So in this example, we're going to continue discussing O's analysis. Now let's suppose we're given the following reagents. So we're told that we're mixing the following starting materials with these two reagents. So this is our ketone solvent and this is our ozone molecule. And we get the following product. So we observe this product at the end. Our goal is to figure out what is going on in our mechanism of this particular reaction. So to begin, let's suppose for the time being that we take away our solvent, that this molecule is not present. What will be our mechanism in that scenario? So let's begin with our ketone. Here we have our 1,3-dipole compound, our ozone molecule, and we have the following forward 1,3-dipolar reaction taking place, aka ozonolysis is taking place. So we have the two electrons in the pi bond of the carbon-carbon double bond attacks this oxygen. This pair of electrons goes on to this oxygen. Finally, the lone pair of electrons on the final oxygen attacks this carbon, forming the following five-membered ozonide ring. So this is our primary ozonide. In the second step, we have a reverse 1-3 dipolar reaction taking place. We have this double bond, or this sigma bond breaks. The pair of electrons form a pi bond between the carbon oxygen, kicking off this sigma bond between our oxygen and oxygen. And the lone pair of electrons finally goes onto this oxygen, and we form the following two intermediate compounds. So we have the carbonyl oxide and the carbonyl compound. In the final step, we have this uh, carbonyl oxide flipping. We have a forward 1 3 dipolar reaction taking place, and we form the following product. This is the final ozonide formed in this three step mechanism. Now, is this product the same thing as this product? The answer is no. Why? Well, because if we examine this carbon and compare it to this carbon, we see that there is a difference between the side chains attached to this carbon. In this case, it seems like we have two ethyl groups. And in this case, we have a methyl and we have the following carbon attached to two H's and one chlorine molecule. So this is not our mechanism for this reaction. Why is that? Well, that's because in the beginning we omitted this solvent molecule. Remember, in our reaction, our reaction actually takes place in the following solvent, in uh, a place where this molecule predominates. And that means that this molecule, this ketone molecule, should participate, and in fact, it does participate in our reaction. Now, looking at this mechanism, where will this most likely participate? Well, we have to look for a carbonyl compound. Since this is a ketone, we have to look for an area where we'll find another carbonyl compound. The answer is in this step here. Notice that here we have the carbonyl oxide and a carbonyl compound mixing, forming our following product. What if we take this, replace it with our solvent shown here? Now, if this flips and a 1-3 forward dipolar reaction or ozonolysis reaction takes place, now we have these two ethyl groups that attach to this carbon and we get the following product shown here. So our mechanism is as follows. We begin with these two reagents with the ozone and ketone. We go to our primary ozonide, then we go to these two reagents. Now instead of this molecule, this will participate because it's the one that predominates, it's the solvent. They mix and form our final product. 